So this is how I see the justification for capitalism. Before capitalism, we had feudalism. Everything belongs to the king because God sent him down here. And then he can give away stuff or take it back. And it's all according to him. So all the power in one hand. People started getting upset with that, especially as individuals started getting more power. And so they forced the feudal lords, the feudal king, and then the his underlings to give up that power to a broader swathe of society, the uh, middle class, the bourgeoisie. And that's how we started with um, kind of liberalism and capitalism. And the justification for it is that we are in fact distributing that power. We used to have one guy in charge, it was the king, and he had all the power in his hand. Now we're actually saying no. Everyone should have access to that power and no one should be able to take it away from an individual. So property rights are a way to ensure that people keep their power because once you own your house, once you own your car and once you have enough money to buy food, you're independent from any of those people that might want to pull you into servitude and make you their essentially their serf or their slave and that system worked very well for a time especially in the beginning because in the beginning after the kings were dethroned and their nobles lost their position everything was up for grabs so there was a lot of social mobility there was a lot of opportunity for people but as things progressed that social mobility, especially lately, has been becoming less and less. Every, every decade now, the social mobility in the US and on other Western countries is decreasing. And that is because we're basically back to the same problem that we had when we had kings. The problem is that power is again accumulated. The power now is not accumulated in a king because God sent them. It's accumulated in individuals. It's not accumulated like some people think in politics because why would it be accumulated in politics? Politics, as flawed as democracies may be, everyone still has a right to vote. Politics is another way of distributing power. In itself, it's not perfect the way we practice it but it's a good idea because one man one vote means that power remains distributed to some extent the problem isn't that politics is corrupt and we should get rid of government although I have my own views on what we should do with government the problem is that politics is being bought and it's being bought because wealth the thing that we did, that private property to distribute power in the first place, has now become concentrated in the hands of the few. And we're re-establishing the same hierarchies that we had when we abolished feudalism. We're going back to a very similar system. And we're again hearing very similar explanations for why the great people deserve to be where they are. Um, back then it was God that put them there. Nowadays it's market forces. When you look at the exact specifics, it doesn't make any sense because the individuals up there often don't do anything good for society at large. They make their money through means which are not really benefiting most of us. Just like back then the kings that were supposedly sent by God were messing up the world. But we're still, there's this force, which back then was God, now is the uh, free market, which apparently has anointed them to rule over us. No, we need to distribute power. And I mean, in capitalism, we could distribute it by saying, well, we'll use a random number generator and every X years 
we'll just reset the clock, all the money goes, and we'll just start from scratch. That would be one way of distributing it. Kind of a primitive way, but that would be one idea. And yes, that would be a system in which we would retain some of the uh, kind of good aspects of of capitalism as it came out from when we got past feudalism and there was that amazing social mobility. Before random number generators and that approach, we had other things that did that for us, like the world war that basically wiped out all wealth, like enormous financial crises which wipe out a lot of wealth. But is that really what we want to rely on? Random number generators? Wars? Terrible crises that disrupt the entire economy and throw millions into poverty so that the system can recover? I don't think so. I think we need to do better. We need to stop power from being centralized by anyone. That includes politicians. We should not respect the political class of people that for generation after generation, parent and child, they go to high office. We should not accept that. But those people nowadays, they're just pawns. They're just being bought. And who they're being bought by, those are the real, the real villains of the piece. That's money. Money is power. Money is accumulated. Power is accumulated. We have rich families. They're not rich because government keeps them rich. This isn't crony capitalism. It's just money making money. And if we want to be, if we want to be true libertarians, if we want to give everyone an equal shot, we've got to always make sure that power stays equally distributed. We need to be egalitarians. If we're not egalitarians, then we're totalitarians. Because any tiny, tiny bit of concentration over a long enough period of time will lead to some form of totalitarianism. And that includes free market capitalism. Because wealth does accumulate. And the historical evidence is clear on that point. And of course you can say, well, if only we got rid of the regulations, then it wouldn't happen anymore. Where is the evidence for that? There is none. We need to make sure that people when they're born all have the same shot. And that means doing something serious about disparities in wealth. I'll see you guys all later. Church of SDFU.